The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely to make sure of my... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, excuse me, Dr. Kildare. I'm you alone. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Come in, Joan. Miss Quinn, I'd like to have you meet the head of our diagnostic clinic, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, how do you do, Dr. Gillespie? I've heard Dr. Kildare mention your name many times. Uh, Miss Quinn, uh, it's uh, my pleasure. Uh, you're new here, aren't you? Mm-hmm. My second day. Uh, now, now, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I know every nurse's cap in the country. Now, let me... Chicago orthopedic. Why, oh, that's exactly right, Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome to Blair General, Miss Quinn. We're happy to have you. We certainly are. <laughs> I know I'm going to love it here. Thank you both. I'll be waiting for you, Dr. Gillespie. Right. Ah, wonderful girl. You mean... Hmm? Uh, she's very pretty. Oh, Miss Quinn. Yes, isn't she? Yeah. Outside of Diana Verna, I'd say she's just about the prettiest nurse I'd ever seen around this hospital. I'm lucky to have her on my ward. Uh, isn't Diana working with you anymore? Well, she's on a two-week vacation. Joan's her replacement. Yeah, she certainly is. Uh, Jimmy, I've been thinking about your future. My future? Now, what brought that up? A young doctor in a large hospital should be very careful of, um, things. Things, Dr. G? What kind of things? Well, um, things. He should never find himself in a position where people might question his personal life. Oh, Oh, I agree. Absolutely right. Yeah, the best way to avoid such a situation is to get married. Now, you and Diana Verner have gone together for some time. She's a wonderful girl. I agree. You don't have to sell me on Diana. Yeah. I am much older than you are, Jimmy. And, uh, well, I'm not making myself very clear. I want you to... Excuse me. Gildare speaking. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, is it that late? Well, I'll be right there. Yes, Joan? Uh, Sorry, Doctor, I've got to run. But, Jimmy, I, I want to talk to you about this. Well, it's you a very... see... Let's have lunch together. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm tied up for lunch. Some other time, huh? See you later, Doctor. Uh, Joan. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Joan, this is our cafeteria at Blair General. How do you like it? Oh, I'm so glad you brought me here, Jimmy. This is a wonderful hospital. I'm very glad you're here. Very glad. Oh, may I have the sugar, please? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jimmy, I was never so happy. I could just kiss you. <laughs> well, don't do it now. People might not understand. Why, oh, Jimmy, what do you, you mean? You know very well what I mean. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie's sitting over there glaring at us. Mm. And every intern in the place is having indigestion on account of you. Well, I'm with you, and all that'll stop pretty soon. I know it will. Jimmy, I'm so glad. I'm so honestly glad to be working with you. Mm. I'm sort of protected from things like that. What was it in Chicago, Joan? Oh, the usual. A patient who was in the hospital for a rather long convalescence thought he'd fallen in love with me, and, well, I just couldn't stay on. Oh, you didn't have to leave. If I know you, Joan, you didn't encourage him. 
No, not purposely. Oh, Jimmy, ever since I was in high school and won my first beauty contest, I've, I've known how to lower my eyes at just the right time. Oh, yes. or look sad or winsome or whatever the occasion demanded. It's become a sort of reflex. I don't know, I'm doing it sometimes and things happen that I don't intend to happen. I see. Well, it was fun then, teasing. But now I'm a grown woman, graduate nurse. I don't want a lot of men falling all over themselves for me. There's only one man I want. Uh, you're, you're using your eyes on me right now. Hmm? Oh, darn it, there I go. You see how it is. Help me, Jimmy, prescribe something. I'll tell you what. To play safe, and so you won't lose your touch. Oh. You just do it when you're around me. The rest of the time, be on your guard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. I'll do my best. <laughs> Leonard Gillespie, as I live and breathe. Hello, Molly. Uh, you're pretty as a picture. Ah. Are you up here to ask for a new nurse? New nurse? Oh, no, nothing like that. No. Leonard, you haven't been fighting with Dr. Carew again and want me to smooth it over for oh, you. Oh, no, 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 no. Carew and I get along just fine. Good. <laughs> well, I know you aren't here to ask me to marry you, so there's just one other thing. Come on, out with it. I'm a busy woman. What about Dr. Kildare? Molly, I'm worried about that new nurse he's got, the one who's replacing Diana Werner. Joan Quinn? What's wrong with her? I met her for the first time today. I don't like the way she looks at him. You mean you came up here just to tell me you don't like the way a nurse looks at a doctor? It's the way Kildare's looking at her. Oh, you've lost your mind. Now, Molly, what I'm trying to say is that she's, uh, well, she's an awful lot of girl. <laughs> oh. Uh, you should have seen him at lunch today. People are beginning to talk already. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, let them talk. Joan's only going to be with Dr. Kildare until Diana Verna returns. That's just two weeks, and then she'll have a regular assignment. Well, I know, but give a woman like that two days with a man like Kildare, and he's liable to wind up married to her. Well, you've always said you thought Dr. Kildare should marry. Ah, but hang it all, Molly. Diana Verna is a girl for Jimmy Kildare. Not Joan Quinn. She's got a vampire look to her. Maybe she has, but she's still a good nurse. Ah, good nurse. You ought to be in the chorus line. And Dr. Kildare certainly thinks so. Yeah, she's out for him, Molly. You've got to transfer that female Rasputin right away. I don't have to do anything of the sort. Is not... No, oh, there's my buzzer. I've got to get over to pathology right away. Molly, I wish you'd look at this from my point of view. Joan is a capable nurse, so Dr. Kildare is more than satisfied with her. No, Leonard, I will not transfer her, and that is final. Capable nurse. Bleh. A Delilah, if I ever saw one. Oh. Oh, I, I, I thought I had... Miss the bird's office. This is Dr. Guru. She's out. This is Gillespie. Oh, Dr. Gillespie. I, I was just calling to see if Miss Bird had a nurse to spare. Uh, they're short in orthopedic ward. Oh, they? It's too bad. Yes, indeed. Yes. As the head of this hospital, sometimes I just don't know what to do. Hmm. They're complaining. And Miss Bird isn't in. And oh, I... Dr. Guru, I know just the nurse for that ward. She's brilliant, capable, efficient. Really? Yeah. Oh. Her name is Joan Quinn. Specialized in orthopedic work in Chicago. Brand new here. Uh, do you know if she's been assigned yet? Well, yeah, just temporarily on Kildare's ward. But she could be unassigned. Oh, I couldn't do that. You could if you knew the circumstances. Circumstances? Uh, what uh, do you mean? I'll be right down to your office and explain. In detail. <laughs> Dr. Carew, I want to know why Miss Quinn has been transferred to orthopedic ward. Well, now, Dr. Kildare, she <clears throat> she is a specialist in orthopedic work. But I made a request that she be assigned to me. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I know about that. Oh, really? And how did you know? Well, I, I mean, I heard about it, and I, I, I thought that I... Oh, Dr. Gillespie, just the man I wanted to see. Hello, Jimmy. What is it, Carew? Uh, Dr. Kildare has been asking me about Miss Quinn. Oh, oh well, well, I think I'll be running uh, along. Just a minute. Be... Did you have anything to do with all this? Why, 
Jimmy, I don't have anything to do with the assignment of nurses. That's Molly Bird's problem. I know. Only she told me she didn't have anything to do with this case. You might as well know. Dr. Gillespie and I decided it would be better for you if Miss Quinn were placed in another part of the hospital. Uh, we, we thought she might distract you from your work, Jimmy. Uh, I see. And you both were aware of all the trouble I went to to have her work for me. Well, Jimmy, people were starting to talk about you two. And so you just stepped in and straightened matters out, right? Well, we did it for your own good. I see. Well, if I weren't already aware of Miss Quinn's charms, I'm certainly aware of them now, thanks to you. And if I felt they were interfering with my work in any way, I would have taken steps. I think I'm a mature enough person to make my own decisions in these matters. Or maybe you don't think so around here. I don't think we did the right thing, Dr. Gillespie. Yes, plots. Well. Oh, well yourself. He had every right to become angry, and you know it, Dr. Gillespie. Parker, if there's one thing I don't want, it's a lecture from you. Now, go out and clean a test tube and leave me alone. And you're going to have to apologize to him sooner or later. Might as well be sooner. I waited in his office for three hours this afternoon, and he never showed up. Well, you just have to catch him when you can. Well, she's caught him, all right. That nurse, she's an enchantress. She's a lure, a vixen. She came here from Chicago with a mission. I see it all now. What are you talking about? I never considered for one moment that Jimmy would ever leave Blair General. Dr. Kildare leaving? An hour ago, I learned something while I was waiting in his office. There was a letter on his desk. A letter on his desk? You mean you read his mail? I certainly did. It was from a Chicago hospital offering him a post there. No. Yes, Parker, yes. And I believe we just lost the best young doctor in the country. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Come in. Oh, Jimmy. Joan. I'm sorry, Dr. Kildare. Come in, Joan. I was transferred because they didn't want me working with you. Isn't that right? Oh, I don't know. They shift people around here all the time. Oh, no, that's not true, Jimmy, because we had lunch together and went out one night and because you requested me to work with you looks bad for you, doesn't it? A few people have probably made some comments here and there. They don't mean a thing. Oh, please don't try to make it easy for me, Jimmy. They must mean something if if you're going to leave the hospital. Oh, uh-huh. just a minute. But I have to be perfectly honest with you, Jimmy. The, the way it sounded to me, it seemed as if, as if you were being asked to resign. Is that so? Well, I didn't believe it, of course. I, I didn't want to, but all the other nurses have suddenly started treating me as if I'd committed some crime... It isn't true that you're being fired, is it? Hmm? Oh, no, Joan, I'm not being fired. Oh. Here's what I was looking for. Oh, what is it? Just a letter of mine. Thought for a minute it might have been missing. I should never have left it on my desk. What am I going to do, Jimmy? Should I go to Dr. Carew or should I quit or what? Joan, believe me, you don't have to leave this time. What's happened is not your fault. It's my job to do something, and I know just what I'm going to do. Just a minute. Yes, Dr. Gillespie. Didn't I just see you come out of Dr. Q 
special day's office. What are you doing with all those books and things? Uh, carrying them. And if I stand here much longer, Doc, I, I might drop them. I, I'm doing a favor for a friend. What friend? Dr. Gillespie, I'm afraid that at the moment that I am not at liberty to divulge that, I, I promise my friend. You're not at liberty, huh? Come now, Wayman. What is it? Another minute, Doctor. I'll drop these books, so help me. Well, tell me all about it now, and you won't have to stand there. Here they go. See what you made me do. Oh, I'm sorry, Wayman. Uh, here, let me help you pick them up. No, 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 thanks, Doctor. I'll do it all right myself. I insist on helping you. After all, I... Well, these books belong to Dr. Kildare. I'm sorry you look, Doctor. So am I, Waylon. So am I. Tell me, where are you supposed to take these things? To his car. Mm. Mm. And there's a lot of other stuff, too. Microscopes and, and, and things. I see. Then he's made up his mind. Look, you can't let him go, Doc. He's too nice a guy. A lot of people agree with you, Wayman. A lot of people. <laughs> Jimmy, my boy, come in, come in. You sent for me, Dr. Gillespie? Well, it's a sort of a slow afternoon. I thought it might be nice for the two of us to sit around and chat. Mm, they're not too slow up at my end of the hospital. Jimmy, let's get to the point. You see sitting before you a four-star, gold-plated, embossed example of a meddling old fool. Oh, that's pretty harsh self-condemnation, Doctor. Well... Well deserved, Jimmy. I must confess that I was the one who had Joan Quinn transferred out of your department. Yes, I know. You've always been my favorite doctor. Not only mine, but a lot of people. Well, you, well you're the apple of Dr. Carew's eye. Really? Yes, indeed. He's admired the way you've stuck with this hospital through thick and thin... Through fat days and lean days. Through the good years and the bad years. Yeah, exactly. And he was saying it was getting close to the time when you should be rewarded for your faithfulness. Thank him for me. And as for myself, Jimmy, I've always looked forward to your taking over my post on that sad day when they set me out to pasture. Dr. G, I suspect you'll still be at this desk 30 years. Oh, now. no, Jimmy. No, 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 no. Uh, confidentially, I don't think it'll be long now. Oh? Uh, my usefulness is about over, you know. And, well, there's no other doctor in this country I'd rather hand the reins over to than you. I'm deeply moved, Dr. Gillespie. But my own plans for the future are a little uncertain at present. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to return to my work. Oh, sure, Jimmy. Duty, duty before anything else. Uh, we'll talk again later. Dr. Carew speaking. You'll ask me, Carew. Didn't work. I'm pretty burned up about everything. Oh, this is terrible. 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 It's worse than that. In a couple of days, you're going to be less one doctor, and I am going to be out one friend. Oh, well, isn't there something we can do? Well, if there is, I haven't thought of it yet. And frankly, right at the moment, I feel worse than I've felt in years. <laughs> Matter, John. They sent me up for you. Can you come to 3B right away? Certainly. What is it? Dr. Gillespie just collapsed in his office. How did it happen, Dr. Uh, Carew? Well, I, I, I don't really know. I came in and found him on the floor. I had some ward attendants uh, bring him in here. Mm -hmm. I started to examine him, but he insisted that you look after him. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, I don't think I'll live another hour. Oh, my. Jimmy? Jimmy? Is that you? I'm right here, Dr. G. Your pulse is way up. Uh, must be 140. That's exactly what it is. You have a temperature and your face is flushed. Tell me what happened. He became dizzy. 
gets pops before his eyes. Yeah, I can tell him, Carew. I can tell him. Oh. <laughs> After all, it happened to me. Oh, don't get excited, Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> Everything went black. Yes, black, black. And, and, and the last thing I remember was falling out of that chair. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what it might be? Jimmy, I can't figure it out. <laughs> I guess I'm just overworked. Yes, he, he's overworked. Uh, Jimmy... I don't want any other doctor looking after me. Promise me that you'll stay with me until I get through this. Yes, do promise. I promise, Dr. Jane. Good boy. I guess I'll just have to run you through a whole series of clinical tests. I'll get started on it right away. We did it, Carew. We did it. <laughs> If uh, we can get him to stay now, we can get him to stay forever. <laughs> How's Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Kildare? He's resting comfortably, Barker. Oh. oh, I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to that man. Uh, uh... Tell me, Parker, uh, was the doctor in his laboratory about, about a half an hour ago? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, he was. Mm -hmm. Did you by any chance see what he was doing there? Oh, well, no. No, not exactly. I... Think hard, Parker. Well, I think I did hear him mumble something about digitalis. Oh, digitalis. Digitalis. Huh? Thank you, Parker. Thank you very much. Will he be all right, Dr. Kildare? Parker, I think he'll be up and around before you know it. Dr. G? Hello, Jimmy. Oh, how do you feel now? Uh, pretty weak, <laughs> Oh. I'm afraid I'm in serious shape. Well, I, I hate to tell you this, but after all, you're a doctor and you should be able to take it. Take what? Well, you're suffering from an unusual malady, one known as acute snoopitis. Acute snoopitis? Yes, the symptoms are bulging of the eyes, enlargement of the ears, and elongation of the nose, not to mention an inability at controlling speech. Why, Jimmy, how could you... And as for that fever and fast pulse, you took digitalis to give you those symptoms. I did? You did. Hmm. Well, what sort of treatment do you prescribe, Doctor? Something to stop the disease once and for all. Immediate injection of the truth in the form of certain facts to counteract certain fictions. Well... I guess I'm ready for the first injection. I guess you are. Fiction. That Joan Quinn and I are emotionally interested in each other. In mm. fact, we are just old friends. I was the best man at her wedding. She married a medical student six months ago, and those books and personal equipment I was moving out were for him to save him some money. Say, I'm beginning to feel better already. Fiction. I am going to leave Blair General Hospital. Fact, I am not. I received a letter from another hospital, considered it for a day, and rejected it. If you'd only looked further down into that pile of letters on my desk, you'd have found my reply turning down the job. Jimmy, I confess you were right. Hmm. You know, I I think I'm just about cured. Now, wait a minute. Another injection. Fiction. You are getting out of bed. Fact. You are not. Now, no, 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 no. Lie down, Dr. G. With a nurse and the head of this hospital as witnesses, you placed me in complete charge of your case. Now... Whether you know it or not, you are run down from overwork. Uh, a few days in bed will do you a world of good. I'm signing the order myself. Oh, no, Jimmy. Don't no. now, Jimmy, me. And I'll tell you another thing. Your nurse is going to be Joan Quinn. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, well, now, say, you know, maybe you've got something. Maybe, maybe I do need a rest. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. And now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. How 
How's Dr. Gillespie, Parker? Oh, Joan Quinn has him purring like a kitten. Uh Uh-oh, well, there's his buzzer. She asked me to look after him for a few minutes. I think I'll look in on him with you. Oh, hello, cutie. Huh? Oh, it's you. Oh, I didn't think you were calling me cutie. Now, what are you hiding, Dr. Gillespie? I'm not hiding in there. Oh, oh, yes, you are. Now, come out with it. Come on, come ah, on. All right. But it's a slingshot. Made out of a piece of rubber tubing. Well, a man has to do something. Or you go crazy here in bed. I'm a pretty good shot, too. I can hit the doorknob four times out of five. <laughs> What's your ammunition? Pills. Dr. Gillespie. Well, just for that, I think I'm going to keep you in bed three more days. Ah, you wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. Goodbye and pleasant dreams, Dr. G. I'll be back, doctor. Goodbye. Oh! (laughs) Dr. Gillespie! I've been waiting all day to do that. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by E. Jack Newman and John Michael Hayes and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Ed Max, Eleanor Audley, and Betty Lou Gerson. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 